Hey everybody, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Toxic Biohazard. This is going to be video number four, and we're going to be talking about the filter section of this synthesizer. So let's go to Options and Reset Program. For this demonstration, I will use a saw wave because a sine wave is kind of pointless when we're talking about filtering. So the first thing you're going to notice here at this filter section is the mode. What type of filter do you want? Now when we click this, we have Off, Low Pass, Band Pass, and High Pass. Now that does seem restrictive as you only have three filters really to choose from, but on the flip side of that, they are actually very good sounding. I really like them personally, so like it doesn't bother me that much that I don't have like a hundred different versions of a low pass or a high pass. So make it that of what you will. They do say it's analog model, I think off Moog, but regardless, they do sound very good and it's one of the reasons why I really like this synth. So let's first start off with a low pass LP. Think of it as the low frequencies are able to pass, if that makes kind of sense to you. So let's first turn this off and we'll see. This is what this sounds like. And I'll make this synth patch just a little less boring. So let me bring this down. Okay, so just a super saw, kind of very basic one for this demonstration. So we can see the harmonic content up here. Now when we put on our low pass, at this value set here at this cutoff, we can kind of see that the cutoff is probably maybe here and here's where it maybe tapers off as well. So next up, we're going to look at this cutoff knob. As we change this, we can see the, the top end here is getting shaven off or it's getting added. And then next up, we have the resonance, which is basically where the cutoff frequency starts. That's going to accentuate that area. And we will be able to see it here in the graph as well. So those little hot spots are where that resonance area is happening at. Generally, these two are used a lot for automation. So you'll, you know, they'll might sync it up to a certain song. So something kind of like that, or they might fade it in. And a cool part of this synth, so if you want to sync this up to maybe your song and have something L, like an LFO control it, that's what this knob over here does. So LFO one amount. So let's put this cutoff maybe kind of right here, and then we'll turn this LFO amount up. So now if we look over here in the LFO 1 section, which we will get to in the next video for this section here, we can see that this sine wave is controlling this cutoff right here. So this shape here is basically this shape right here. And with the sync knob, you can sync this to your tempo so it stays in time with your song. And as we mentioned before in the oscillator video, you have a lot of different choices of different waveforms. So you can pick all these same choices here in the LFO as well. So if we cycle through a couple of these. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. A very cool part though is the gate section. So if we check out some of these gates. These ones are kind of fast, so you, you might want to slow down the sync to make them sound a little bit better. It's a little too fast. So that's basically in a nutshell what this LFO amount does. So very, very cool. And if you want to check out these band passes, let's turn this down a little bit here. And let's play with our cutoff. 
And here's the resonance for the bandpass. So that resonance is happening right here where you can see those lines. And then let's move on to the high pass, which is the opposite of the low pass, so it's letting the highs pass. So the higher we turn this up on the high pass, the low end starts getting cut, as we can see here. And then these little highlights here again are where the resonance is affecting. So next up, we have this EG amount. So what's actually really cool about this is if we're familiar with the master envelope and the master, or not the master, the uh, oscillator envelope, you have a same kind of similar function here. So we'll put this back to a low pass. And this EG amount is basically telling you the amount of influence this envelope will have on your filter. So if we have a cutoff here, and this is up all the way. It's not going to have any effect because this is 0%. Let's turn it all the way to the right so it has maximum influence. And change this attack knob. Maybe it's a little easier to hear if it's a little down here. There we go. So you see here on the uh, spectrum, do you see how it's kind of fading in right here? So it's basically opening up the filter. And if you do this in the opposite direction, it's inverting this envelope you have here. So it's definitely something to play around with. It's kind of nice that you can like, you can pr pr pray, or not pray, press a key and the filter will basically open up and close up depending on your attack time then you have your release time so you can say this is the filter is going to open up for a little bit and then once you let go it's going to close again or open again depending on if it's on the left or the right so the right is basically how this is going to look and then the left is going to be 100 percent influence but an inverted version of that envelope and then up on the center is going to be no effect if you don't want to worry about the filter itself So that in a nutshell is the filter section. It's relatively small, but there's so many different options you can use, especially with the LFO amount as well. You kind of time something like this with a gate, and then you do a little bit of the filter as well. It can turn out to be some pretty cool results. And before we leave though, let's talk about the key tracking and the velocity tracking. So the key tracking is basically going to be, if you have this up all the, all the way at the, at the uh, maximum influence, the distance between the notes that you play and the cutoff frequency is going to follow. So it's basically telling the cutoff frequency uh, wherever this cutoff spot is, it's telling it to move in relationship to the note you're playing. So the lower note you're gonna play, the cutoff is going to be at a lower spot of the spectrum and the higher notes you play, it's gonna be at a higher spot of the spectrum. So it's kind of consistent with the notes that you play. And then the, the velocity tracking is basically going to tell you the harder note that you play, the more influence the filter is going to have, the cutoff is going to have on the filter itself. I have a keyboard on my laptop right now, so I don't have my velocity keyboard with me, but feel free to play around with that and see how that makes you feel. It's kind of cool because if you hit it really hard, then it's going to have a more drastic effect, but maybe you might not want that. So that's what this velocity tracking there does. So hopefully this makes somewhat sense, and again, if there's any questions about the filter section, please let me know, and I'll do my best to explain that to you. But I think it's pretty straightforward. You just got to spend some time with it and grow to love this synthesizer because it, because it is amazing. For the next video, we're going to be talking about the LFO section, so this little area here and this one here because you have two of them. And although it seems like there's not many controls, it does do a lot of cool stuff. So we'll save that for the next video. Thank you for watching.